Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to my retrospective series on Final Fantasy XIV Jobs. We're looking back at how jobs used to be designed all the way from A Realm Reborn through to the current expansion. Now, we've gone through quite a few jobs at this point from back in the day, but today we get to talk about one of my absolute favorites in that of Monk. It is the job I always want to play, but I keep getting forced onto playing Fizz Ranged. That's just the life, I suppose. Heck, even in 2.0 that happened. So I just can't win, can I? But it's always been a job that's kind of stuck close to its roots, even if it's obviously moved away from them since then. It started as a job that was fast, tons of positionals, kind of tanky even, and that's something we'll get into in a bit. And nowadays it's lost some of its maintenance, it's lost some of those positionals, in fact, it's lost most of its positionals, but it still feels a lot like the job that we used to play way back when, and for that reason, it's remained a pretty popular job. It's had its ups and downs, <laughs> we'll definitely get into that. But Monk is fun, and I think the amount of people that play it kind of shows that. But anyway, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get into our Monk retrospective. So in order to actually look back at all those old skills, we're using a tool called the Wayback Machine. It allows me to put in a web page and look back at archived versions of it to just see what the page represented at a, at a given time. And fortunately for us, the console games wiki actually has a Realm Reborn skills, icons, all that stuff. But we can't start right on Monk. We actually need to start on Pugilist because back then the pages just had different information. So all the pugilist skills we have to keep in mind as we talk about monk and we'll look at the beginning and end of every expansion so we can see what happened in the middle not just at the start but in between monk saw a lot of changes especially a couple of expansions down the line so here we have pugilist the base class for monk but not the only class you needed you also needed lancer at level 15 but if i'm being honest you realistically needed it at level 34 for the cross class skill blood for blood we'll talk about that later as for the actual skills, a lot of these still are in the game today, even if they've changed in some capacity, and they even have somewhat similar effects in a lot of the cases, if not just refined from what they were way back when, or modernized, and that will become obvious very quickly. Bootshine is the first skill that you get, and it's one of the most iconic ones they have. Gotta crit the bootshine. When you are behind the target in your Opa Opa form, you are going to have a guaranteed crit. Now, forms were the big thing that we were first introduced to before all the other job elements. Essentially, instead of having a static one, two, three rotation, they have access to forms. And when they're in a form, they can access all of the skills of that form. And the idea is to bounce between the different skills based on the situation in order to maintain buffs and to defeat the enemy. And as such, it's always been a very free flowing job. And that to this day has continued to be a major benefit to the job's design, even when the job is not doing its best. So Bootshine, the starter one, and Opa Opa form is something that you don't even get really access to until you get to level six. So that little bonus doesn't even matter for a few levels. True Strike is another rear skill, but the only thing it did was increase your critical damage by 5% when behind the target. Now, chance for critical damage increases by 5%. I'm sorry, that means the crit chance went up by 5%. So if it didn't crit, it was almost no different what position you actually got it from. And then if it did crit, regardless of the position you were from, it was the same damage anyway. So this was something that you're seeing here that led to a Realm Reborn Monk being kind of a meme because the rear skills didn't really offer that much in the way of bonuses to the point where a flank only rotation was pretty much equal in DPS. And we'll go over the flank skills as we go through everything here and on the monk page. But a lot of times you just didn't even use these skills. I believe in 2.1 they fixed that, but what a pretty long time before that became the case. Featherfoot, an old defensive skill, increased evasion by 15%. Funnily enough, Featherfoot, as well as some of their other tools, were super important to the job in 1.0, where it actually was a pseudo-tank, both as Pugilist and eventually as Monk. Back then, Featherfoot was a guaranteed evasion, and you would use it to access some of your strongest skills and, of course, avoid big hits. However, they kept it here, and it was nice to occasionally avoid physical damage. You know, it could even be physical AoEs from bosses sometimes, and, you know, it was just nice to have, but was never the difference maker for the job. 
Then we get to their first flank skill and that of Snap Punch. Now, this is the main reason why flank skills are so much more popular right in 2.0. You can see there's a significant potency increase for delivering the attack from the flank. And not only that, but that potency is significantly higher than that of Boot Shine and True Strike. And it was just guaranteed, even at base, high damage. So, a lot of the times you just skipped doing anything else and you just did all the flank skills. But the basic idea is by level six, you only have boot shine, true strike and snap punch. And that is kind of your one, two, three, but it teaches you the basics about how the different form changes work. Most importantly though, snap punch introduces you to the next major job mechanic in that of greased lightning. Back then, this was a stackable buff that you would get every time you did a co-whirl form skill, which would always be the third skill in any sequence. And it stacked up to three times and you needed to maintain it to do the most damage possible. As you can see here, increased damage dealt by 7% and attack speed by 5%. So this is what made them hit hard and fast. However, if there was boss downtime, nothing to hit, or just you lost it because you screwed up, you were pretty doomed because the job just fell into a pit of despair whenever that happened. And we'll see throughout the various expansions, they just started trying to make this more manageable, make it that it was something that you didn't have to think about as much until it was altogether removed late in Shadowbringers, or at the very least made strictly a trait. Now at this level, you can only get one stack, but we would go up to three stacks later in A Realm Reborn. Second wind, a skill that's still around today, restores HP just back then. It was max HP instead of a potency like we have today. Now, Haymaker might look familiar, and that's because it is. Delivers an attack with a potency of 170, can only be used immediately after evading an attack, and would also slow by 20% for 12 seconds. Yeah, Haymaker is pretty much the OG arm's length. It functions nothing like it, but you can kind of recognize from the animation what I mean. It's kind of the, the arm's length is the spiritual successor to Haymaker, I suppose. But not a bad thing. If you could evade an attack, like if you got a proc off a of Featherfoot, or even if there was some attacks, if you did them correctly, if you did the mechanic, it would say you evaded the attack. And depending on where you were in your rotation, it was sometimes worth it to actually do Haymaker instead of your other skills. But because it delayed your stances, this became less and less of a thing as time went on. Internal release increased crit rate by 20%. Now, I know they get a trait that increases that. However, that is one of the most important cross-class skills right up there with Blood for Blood. If you had Pugilist as a subclass and you could pull that skill, then you definitely did because who wouldn't want 20% crit rate when you have access to it? Oh, and then we get Touch of Death. Pretty much every job had like a standalone dot they had to maintain back then, and this was Monks. I mean, it did 270 potency over 30 seconds. That's not bad, especially when you look at their other skills, but it also never felt good. I believe that most people just kind of forewent using it early on in A Realm Reborn, and it wasn't until Monks saw some other changes that they really started getting used to the whole Touch of Death maintenance. But I also think some of that was just like, I don't remember if it was numerically bad because obviously the potency is quite high, but I think people just didn't care. and They were like focused on their rotation a lot more back then, even if this was supposed to be a part of it and they just ignored it. Then you have Twin Snakes, their next flank skill, and once again, a 40 potency increase for hitting from the flank. So Twin Snakes is only 10% less potency than True Strike, and you have to use it anyway because it gives you a buff that increases your damage dealt. And I know they get a passive later as well that increases that number even further. So again, you're seeing why the flank only rotation was kind of just an acceptable thing because there was barely any difference. Fist of Earth, we had elemental fists. I even forgot about those for a little bit. Fist of Earth, reduced damage taken by 10%. You could only have one elemental fist between Fire, Wind, and Earth, and each of them kind of had their own uh, community-based function. R uh, fist of Earth, I almost said Riddle of Earth, which is way ahead of where we are right now. Fist of Earth was the I'm soloing option or the I'm just trying to take less damage option. Like you could use it when you were seeing like a raid fight or a trial fight for the first time just to reduce incoming damage and make the healer's lives a little easier. Um, or if there was like downtime in a raid and you didn't have any reason to use the other fist, then Fist of Earth didn't hurt either. So it was mildly useful, but still not the most important of the three. Now we have Demolish. This was just a dot. This didn't even do damage on the initial hit when A Realm Reborn first came out. So while yes, Six ticks of 40, 240 potency is nice. Again, people just kind of still didn't do it. <laughs> and it was, again, it was worth it. But people just said, eh, you know, flank only. I don't care. The difference is, is, is minor. So 
Uh, this would, of course, get changed. Demolish is still around today. All the weapon skills you've seen, other than Touch of Death, have pretty much all are all still around today and much more balanced than they were in A Realm Reborn. Arm of the Destroyer. Now, this one was a pain point. So it's Opal Opal bonus, meaning specifically after a Coral Stance, if you used it, was an AoE Silence. Now, nowadays we have Interrupt, which is the equivalent of what a Silence was, but an AoE Silence had a few unique uses. For one, if there were lots of enemies casting spells and the tank was trying to pull them or move them, you could use Arm of the Destroyer, maybe in conjunction with Perfect Balance, which we can see a few skills down, in order to silence them repeatedly and just make sure that the tank could like reposition them in some way. You could also save groups, because sometimes classes that could silence that, you know, were expected to, like uh, bards, sometimes they were a little slow at using their silence. So sometimes I would just hold Opa Opa say and be like, a silence should be coming out here. And he said, bam, now I'm the savior of the group. But the TP cost, ugh. Yeah, TP, something I mentioned in the other retrospective videos, but essentially melee MP, but a far more strict resource. AoEing and even just doing your rotation basically puts you in the hole and you could just end up being able to not attack for entire like periods of time, especially if you died and your TP reset to zero. Oh, terrible, terrible time for any melee playing back then when that happened. Fist of Wind, also known as uh, Fist of Town, because it just increased movement speed. So when your sprint was on cooldown, you would just use this in towns instead. You could use it in a fight to get someplace quicker because you didn't want to use sprint as a melee back then because it used all your TP. But you seldom saw it. You more often saw it. if there was a reason to not be in Fist of Fire, which is the last one we'll get to in a bit. You were mostly in Fist of Earth. Steel Peak, it was an off global that did damage, but it also stunned. And this was a huge pain point in the early days. They had stuns on like off global damage skills for like everyone. And everyone's like, oh, I want to deal damage. Let me just use this skill. And for like most end game bosses, that's not an issue. But for the occasional one where you need to time a stun and then everyone's just spamming stuns and the boss becomes immune, looking at you, Dorme Chimera, because it always helped to have a few stuns on top of silences there. Then, uh, yeah, they would just be stun immune because nobody could uh, could hold back or nobody wanted to hold back, especially on trash, too. Mantra, increase HP recovery via curing magic by 20%, a skill that's remained almost identical for a decade now, but funnily enough, was not considered that good of a skill back in A Realm Reborn. Now, some of that was the stigma from its cross-class potency, where it's only 5% instead of 20%. But uh, here, actually, you know what? I wonder if it was always 5% or if it started as 20% and then they nerfed it. I guess I don't know if this is including the trait, but I know at some point that became a thing. So maybe here it was okay. I'll have to go down to the traits and see what they say. But either way, yeah, Mantra just never was loved all that much. It's way more loved now, and rightfully so. Howling Fist, Line AoE, Off Global, was around for many expansions. I think now it's one of your your blitzes in the early levels, along with Steel Peak. Uh, and it's actually pretty cool that they, they, oh, no, no, no. Howling Fist is your early level Forbidden Chakra now. That's what it is. I was so glad that they brought it back, even for just the early levels. That, that gave me some good joy, especially when I sink down. Uh, but yeah, that back then it was just an off global used it once a minute, you know, along with Steel Peak, which I think has a trait that makes it shorter than 60 seconds. And then Perfect Balance with its four minute cooldown. It's such weird cooldown. Was there anything else with a really weird? No, their their other ones aren't that weird. But the four minutes, why? Basically, lets you do five weapon skills with no form requirements. It's very similar. It's always done something like that since you know ten years ago. But back then, its use was a little weirder because using it during a burst window, which people weren't even really that good at back then. Um, it just wasn't common. Most people just held on to it in case they lost Grease Lightning to quickly get it back. And rarely did you see somebody using it to like try to use boot shines or even to spam snap punches or whatever the heck it was going to be. So it was just kind of in this weird spot where it was the, oh no, there was downtime mechanic button. And that's fine because you had no other way of getting back to Grease Lightning other than to sit there and go through nine weapon skills again. So three weapon skills versus nine weapon skills. I think you know what most people are, are going to pick. And that's it for the pugilist skills. But we do have the traits before we look at Monk and the cross-class skills. 
all the strength related stuff is whatever. Featherfoot evasion, the different stacks of grease lightning, and then just potency increases to stuff. Twin snakes being 10% damage, you know. Uh, second wind being 25% on pugilist, which was really nice. Uh, the 30% crit rate on internal release, you know, steel peak down to 40 seconds, and improves the HP recovery increase granted by mantra by 10%. I wonder if that makes this number 30 or if it made, or if it was 10% cross class and 20% on Monk. That's probably what it was, but either way, it was just better on Monk slash Pugilist. Now, that's it for the 2.0 Pugilist, but we do need to look at the Monk page, which I was scrolled down on apparently, but either way. Uh, so we have five skills here from 30 to 50. Rock Breaker, this is your Coral Stance AoE. And yeah, you know, again, AoE was kind of weird back then with the TP costs, because if you did too much AoE as a melee, you basically ran out of TP in like a few seconds, basically like 15 seconds. So you could only do it when enemies in packs would die very quickly. We didn't have things like fall, out, fall off damage back then. So if everyone was contributing to AOE, it was kind of okay, but that's any other case, Rockbreaker was a little scary to use because you just wouldn't be able to attack for a while when you ran out of TP. Shoulder Tackle, their go-to gap closer until very recently. And it also had a stun tied to it. So same as Steel Peak, kind of annoying. And they did this with a lot of jobs. Kind of annoying, but same deal. You'd sometimes use it for damage, sometimes save it for a gap closer, but we didn't have charges back then. So you only had the one and had a 90 second cooldown. Ugh, awful. Fist of Fire, this was the, if I'm not in the earth or wind, or I don't have a good reason to be in them, might as well be in Fist of Fire. You just have 5% more damage. Why wouldn't you want that? One Elm Punch, one of the most useless skills they've ever had. And yes, I know a Notman existed. It, originally in A Realm Reborn, it was a dispel. You would use it to remove a beneficial status from a target. You almost never did. Enemies that had buffs that you could get rid of, you generally just didn't because it wasn't really that big of a deal. The only enemy I remember using one Ilm Punch on, unironically, was a grip of the mighty, which was the hunt in Mordona, because he would put up a shield and everyone who attacked the shield would not only kill themselves, but heal the boss, I believe. But you could dispel it with one elm punch. And I remember doing that. So I would try to limit the amount of time that that was happening. Although sometimes I would just die in the process because of the counter attack damage, but I just tried my best. <laughs> That's it. One elm punch never got more useful until it got removed. They, they tried to, but it never really did. And then Dragon Kick, the last of our flank skills, 150 from the target's flank. Again, Buchine 130 with the crit, but 150 every single time as long as you're on the flank. So, But more importantly, it reduced the target's blunt resistance and intelligence by 10%. Now, blunt resistance wasn't really that big of a deal, while the other two for the tanks, Ninja, and for Dragoon and Bard for piercing and slashing, those were important. Blunt resistance only worked on the monk and like book smacks and uh, like, like cane smacks from the casters. It, not nothing, but it wasn't something you honestly factored in past, you know, min-maxing to the absolute extreme, which we actually did back in A Realm Reborn. More importantly is the intelligence resistance or the intelligence stat being lowered because most raid-wide AoEs were magic damage. So having a permanent 10% reduction on that was awesome. And then if a tank buster was magic also, then even better. And this would keep Monk as one of the most popular jobs for going through new raids and trials whenever they came out. This would eventually be dialed back and in re-clears in 2.4 and onward, 2.45 and onward, Dragoon was liked a little bit more because it had more synergy with the actual damage that was being dealt with the other teammates. And that is a problem that Monk would have for expansions and expansions and expansions. It was always focused on itself and uh, it was kind of like the Black Mage of the melees where it had nothing that assisted the DPS of anyone else because blunt resistance was really only them. And that would continue until Stormblood, I believe. So we'll get to talk about that a bit in Heaven's Word. As for cross-class skills, I've already mentioned some of these, but you know, faint, you really wouldn't take that unless you really needed the slow. Keen Flurry, nice defensive, but not a super high priority. Now, Impulse Drive is funny because I wonder, I, I'd have to look at its potency. Impulse Drive might have actually been better than some of your own GCDs at level eight. So you might have just spammed it at one point instead of using your actual monk skills. I'd have to double check, but I vaguely remember that being a thing for both Lancer and Pugilist at the low levels. 
Invigorate restores TP, super important must-have skill. And Blood for Blood, while it was a little risky, to say the least, to increase your damage at the cost of taking more damage, this was considered a mandatory skill. Invigorate and Blood for Blood both considered kind of mandatory skills for Monk to get. And as such, when they say Lancer only needs to go to 15 to unlock Monk, realistically, it needed to go to 34. For Marauder, Foresight again, you know, physical defense increase. Cool, you know, it's not the not that big of a deal. Skull Sunder, I think there was a way to use Skull Sunder effectively on Monk, but it was very, very specific that of your timing and like boss uptime and stuff. So most people just didn't bother. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not Skull Sunder. Skull Sunder was if you wanted to tank as a monk because it was enmity increasing. Fracture was the dot. And then same what I just said. Yes, Skull Sunder. I remember Skull Sunder spamming when a tank died as a monk just to try to get aggro over the healers to save their lives. And you know what? It worked from time to time. Bloodbath must have. I mean, just the amount of healing you would get off of that on top of Second Wind and your other tanky elements, like it just was the icing on the cake. And Mercy Stroke, also a must have. Just you could do an extra attack when the boss or enemy was below a certain percent. If you land the killing blow with it, you get a heal. But honestly, it was just extra damage as an enemy neared its death. And as a DPS, of course, you're going to want that. Now, this covers the start of A Realm Reborn, but Monk would get some adjustments going into the end of A Realm Reborn. We would see even just this being made to 150 potency. While it didn't get any potency for the positional, they buffed the base potencies of Bootshine and True Strike so that that whole flank only thing wasn't a thing anymore. Um, but other than that, a lot of this stuff remained the same. Uh, Grease Lightning did see a 2% damage dealt buff per stack, so 6% damage overall. They also changed Second Wind to no longer be based on max HP and said it was a curing potency that scaled with attack power. Haymaker didn't really see any changes. Internal release, Touch of Death, largely the same. All, all this stuff pretty much identical down the line. And this is kind of what it would be from this point on. Yeah, even this remained pretty much the same, yada, yada. Here it is, yeah, Mantra's now 5% at base. Yeah, so Mantra was 20% as a cross-class skill and 30% later. Now it was 5% as a cross-class skill and then whatever the trait is gonna say down below. Uh, and then 20% as, uh, as a, a pugilist slash monk exclusive. And that was the big change they made to that. Uh, going into the actual monk skills, I'm sure there are like TP. Oh, you know what? Actually, what was the cooldown on perfect balance? Was it still four minutes? Still four minutes. Was Mantra 120 here? Yeah, it was. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Either way, uh, rock breaker, not much change. Shoulder tackle. Uh, must be more than 10 yalms from target to execute. Interesting. You know, I I don't remember that where they they made it so you couldn't use it from point blank. You could only use it to get back in range. Interesting. I had forgotten about that. However, it's cooldown now also only 30 seconds. So no longer the 90 second cooldown that it was before. That was ridiculous. Uh, is there any significant change? One Elm Punch got a 40 potency increase. You still never used it, but you know, that's nice, I suppose. And then Dragon Kick remained the same. Other than that, this just looks a little bit nicer on the page. And if you want cross discipline skills or PVP skills, then all that was listed here as well. So Monk got a little bit of fine tuning throughout a Realm Reborn. And going into Heaven's Ward, the Monk, the Monk that I knew was largely still in the same place but not for good reasons anymore. And that'll make a whole lot more sense as we look into the 3.0 expansion, Heaven's Ward. All right, here we are with the Pugilist page for Heaven's Ward. We have to do this until Stormblood, at which point we can use the official Final Fantasy XIV job guide page that they have up there now, which has the Endwalker skills. And again, you're gonna see not a lot of stuff changing. I mean, Boot Shine, True Strike, Featherfoot's only 12%. Okay, and I think that's just for the cross-class version, too. I, I didn't remember them doing that, but okay. Snap Punch, still the same potency. This is still, like, look at how similar all of this is. It's, like, completely identical across everything. Look, it's all the same. This is the same. This is the same. Oh, Demolish has an initial potency now and also deals more potency from the rear. Uh, so those, that was the big change just to give demolish a little bit more of an edge. They also raised the amount of time that the dot was up from 18 seconds to 21 seconds. I believe that was for ease of play, but they would eventually undo that because the longer those dot windows lasted, the less 
ideal they were, especially from a balancing perspective. But that was a much needed change for Demolish because it was still kind of undervalued, you know, just looking at its no initial potency that it did before. Still high potency for a single GCD, but not as uh, sought after. Perfect balance, still four minutes, by the way. Any changes to the traits at all? Oh, this, oh, that's right. This actually was on the last page too because they changed it from a uh, percentage of max HP to a potency. So yeah, this was this was in the Aroma Born page as well. Other than that, Featherfoot now only 20% with the Enhanced Featherfoot instead of 25. But yeah, as you can see, so you can see that at least the base class didn't change much. But at this point, you're really looking at the job changes to the actual job skills on Monk to identify what the direction of the job was going into Heaven's Ward. Now again, Rock Breaker, Shoulder Tackle, they got rid of that minimum distance thing again. That didn't last very long, or maybe it did, but it didn't last on a Heaven's Ward anymore. But everything here is, again, completely identical, uh, other than them getting rid of that little, you know, dumbness here in Shoulder Tackle. And while the thumbnails or the little uh, icons might be missing here, these were the new skills for Heaven's Ward. Form Shift is the first one. Shifts your form to the next in the sequence. If no form is being used, you will move into Opa Opo. Great for pre-pull to set up your initial opener and also during downtime to get into a stance that you can use when the boss will become available again. So that is a skill that to this day is awesome. We love it. And it's you're probably when you're bored before the boss is pulled, you're probably going to spam it. Then you have Meditation, a skill that's still around today. It opens a chakra. Up to five chakra can be opened at once. Shares a recast with all other weapon skills. So that was the only way to generate chakra stacks back then. There was no passive yet. There was no way to get to Forbidden Chakra other than to use the Meditation skill. Oh, and outside of combat, you had to press it five times at the start of Heaven's Ward. They changed that eventually, but Meditation was kind of weird because you would basically use Forbidden Chakra at the start of a fight, and then if there was enough downtime, you'd have to do both Form Shift and Meditation during that time to try to get to another Forbidden Chakra, but you just barely used it, so it was just kind of weird. And then there's Forbidden Chakra with a potency of 320. That's just an OGCD that dealt damage. Elixir Field, a new off-global AoE awesome skill. Um, it's now one of your... Uh, one of your blitzes, one of the finishers for your blitzes, but for a long time it was just an off global. So between Howling Fist, Steel Peak, and Elixir Field, and Forbidden Chakra, if you had it, they had insane burst. And Elixir Field just being 220 AoE was amazing for even just basic things like dungeons. So this was a really valuable skill for a very long time. They also got Purification, which was another thing you could do with your chakras if you had five of them. And there was always some debate about whether to use Forbidden Chakra for the burst damage or to purify because in long fights you tended to run out of TP. And also if you were out of TP and you couldn't even use a weapon skill, it was sometimes okay to actually just use meditation while in melee range of the boss to try to get to purification, which would then buy you time to get to invigorate. And that's really all purification did. But it was still kind of weird because again, you didn't generate chakra stacks unless you use the meditation skill. So a lot of the times people didn't use purification. And then you got Tornado Kick, which was 330 potency, only usable under Grease Lightning 3, and also consumed all of Grease Lightning. This skill would be the single most divisive skill on the job for a very long time. And it kind of encompassed everything they kept doing with Monk for the next expansion, and even like an expansion and a half, in that Tornado Kick existed, everyone wanted a reason to use it, but outside of specific patches, it was kind of griefing yourself to use it, or if you did use it and then didn't get back to Grease Lightning in a very specific way, it was a massive massive loss. At the very most, you used it as a target was dying, as like a final Hail Mary to deal some big potency at the end, because it's a huge potency compared to the other monk skills, but not worth sitting there and using nine GCDs to get back to Grease Lightning, or, you know, seven GCDs if you started before Coral Stance. Yeah, you had perfect balance, but the potency just wasn't really worth going out of your way for. And this became the whole problem. Form shift was a downtime tool. Meditation was once or a downtime tool. You couldn't use Forbidden Chakra or Purification without it, and Tornado Kick was considered griefing yourself to use. So realistically, all they got was Elixir Field. At least that's how monks saw it. So what the heck? It was like, that was one of the most underwhelming things that could have happened. And not only that, 
But remember that intelligence resistance that I mentioned from Dragon Kick being so valuable? Dark Knight had that now. Dark Knight could apply it. And then you could just bring Piercing Resist and Slashing Resist with Dragoon and Ninja, and you had everything covered. So you didn't need the Blunt Resist anymore because it was only for the Monk themselves. So you were just replaced. The whole job was essentially rendered moot outside of Mantra, which, like I said, people weren't really valuing because it wasn't that important. Other than that, the cross-class skills and everything were the same, but this was a big problem with Monk throughout Heaven's Ward. They kind of, them and Paladin, kind of hit the struggle bus hard. And I tried to play Monk. I think I played Monk in 3.2 because they had maybe made some changes or the group didn't have a Dark Knight or just whatever. I was allowed to play it because that's kind of how it was in Raid Tears in, in Heaven's Word. It wasn't, you played what you liked. It was, you played what you were allowed to play. That's the kind of expansion Heaven's Word was. But then we go into the end of Heaven's Word and miraculously enough, you're going to see that almost nothing changed. In fact, Internal release was nerfed, although I think it was only nerfed for cross-class. I think it's still the same with the trait for Monk themselves. But th that's, look, it's all the same. All of it. Steel Peak is here. Oh, Perfect Balance is only three minutes now. There's that, I suppose. You know, cool. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, it was just the cross-class skill that was adjusted. Great, and then you move on to Monk. You're like, oh, I mean, they probably made changes to the job skills, right? You know, they, they, they had to have done something if it was that bad. No, no, they didn't. This is all the same. Everything is the same here. Is there at least a cooldown that's lower or something? Purification even had a two minute cooldown to boot as if it wasn't bad enough that you pretty much could never use it. It had a two minute cooldown to boot and Tornado Kick had a one minute cooldown to boot. Oh, look, Tornado Kick's only 40 seconds now. Great. <laughs> yeah, Heaven's Ward was not good for Monk, and I knew this would be the quickest thing. And you know, Stormblood wasn't much better until later, so let's start talking about that. All right, and now we can use the official Final Fantasy XIV job guide site. They set this up in Stormblood, and as you can see, we're looking at the update from July 18th, 2017. What a time warp. And fortunately, because this was the change coming off of Heaven's Ward, we can analyze exactly what they did. And they made a lot of changes that in context make more sense, but still, you'll, you'll see how I feel about it at all. Uh, so boot shine, potency reduced, TP cost reduced, you know, true strike moved to level four up from two potency reduced and th that's it. Potency reduced. Okay, cool. Just going to start reducing potencies. That's what everyone loves to see. TP cost on snap punch reduced duration of grease lightning increased. Very, very important. In fact, one thing I missed is I believe grease lightning had its, its time increased at some point here. Let me check. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. So at some point in Heaven's Ward, one change they did get was Grease Lightning being 14 seconds. That's one thing we did miss between the beginning of, of Heaven's Ward and the end, because you can see 12%. Okay, great. And then going into Stormblood, it was made 16 seconds. So again, they're trying to make Grease Lightning easier to maintain, and that's going to become even more evident when we look at their later skills. Internal release, now a critical hit rate, but also ex uh, now 30%, but exclusive to Pugilist and Monk. So all of the abilities that were cross-class skills, there's no cross-class from Stormblood onward. There's just cross-roll, and you didn't borrow skills anymore. So this now they just show their full values pretty much all the time. Uh, Fists of Earth, still 10% damage, less damage taken, but now it's level 15 instead of 22, and comes from... A class quest, because Touch of Death, I believe, is gone at this point. Yes, Touch of Death was removed, going into Stormblood. So they made Fist of Earth that reward instead. Twin Snakes, less potency, less TP cost. Arm of the Destroyer unchanged. Demolish, now 18 seconds for the duration of the damage over time. And the TP cost was reduced. Rock Breaker, just the Grease Lightning changes. Same, same. Stun was removed from Steel Peak. Mantra, now Pugilist and Monk exclusive. One Elm Punch now had a stun tied to it instead of the Dispel. So progress. And the whole gimmick was that the stun couldn't be resisted. No matter what their their diminishing returns on debuffs was, it would work. Still absolutely useless. <laughs> yes, again, I'm sure there were niche cases where that was good, especially because Eureka was in this expansion and Eureka had all sorts of funky interactions. So I'm sure it came in useful there at some point, but look at that. We're supposed to be excited about that? Come on. 
Howling Fist, unchanged. Perfect Balance, unchanged. Whew. Dragon Kick, potency reduced. No longer reduces intelligence by 10%. Still had blunt resistance tied to it, though. NTP cost reduced. Form Shift, unchanged. Meditation, unchanged. Forbidden Chakra had its potency dropped to 250. They also made it more responsive. It was really unresponsive in Heaven's Ward. I mean, you didn't have to interact with it much, so it didn't matter. But now you are going to be interacting with it a lot more, and we'll cover that in a second. So they made it a lot better. Elixir Field Unchanged, Purification Unchanged, Tornado Kick Unchanged, but not for long. And then we get into the new skills, Riddle of Earth. So this would change you into Fist of Earth and grant you Earth's reply if damage was taken while Riddle of Earth was active. This would extend Grease Lightning's duration to the maximum and reduce your damage taken by 10% further for the duration of Earth's reply. So this was really nice during downtime in order to extend Grease Lightning. And this was kind of the thing they really started hammering home. So you not only were gonna take less damage, and you know, if it was downtime anyway, you didn't mind too much because you weren't really losing damage, but you could make sure that you didn't drop Grease Lightning during that time. That didn't stop them from making really long downtime phases where you still lost it. And that was super annoying, but it was better at least. Earth Tackle. Now, this was a big thing, and this will show in the traits, but they added elemental shoulder tackles, where depending on the fist stance you were in, it would change what your, your shoulder tackle did. Now, if you were in Earth, it would do 100 potency and do a 10 yall knockback on top of the stun. If you were in Wind, it would do the stun, and it would do less potency, but you could do two tackles back-to-back -back for hypermobility. And then Fire Tackle had the highest potency and just stunned. Now, that looks cool, but I'm here to tell you that at the start of Stormblood, uh, two out of three of those were useless. Wind Tackle was half the potency of Fire Tackle, but you got to do it twice. The problem being, you were in Fist of Wind, meaning you were losing the damage increase from being in Fist of Fire. And Earth Tackle, a knockback. Come on. So essentially, it was like they didn't make any changes at all. And we're already at level 66, so they've gotten Riddle of Earth, they've gotten Elemental Tackles. What else would they get? Fortunately, their level 68 and 70 skills were amazing. Riddle of Fire, I say amazing, but I forgot how divisive this was until I started reading it again. It increased your damage dealt by 30%, but made you 15% slower. A lot of people didn't like that. There's a reason it's not like that anymore today, and it's because it was considered really counterintuitive to the way the job had functioned up to that point. Now, all of a sudden, you were just ultra slow, or at least ultra slow compared to your normal global cooldown, just to hit harder. And there was questions about how much of a DPS increase it really was, and it was, it was mathed out, but it, people just didn't like it conceptually. So that didn't survive too long, but at least it was a personal offensive cooldown, which was something they really didn't have other than perfect balance before this point. And I already told you how that went. Then we got Brotherhood. Now Brotherhood, both great and absolutely terrible at the same time. Increases physical damage dealt by nearby party members by 5%. Also grants a 30% chance of opening a chakra when a party member under the effect of Brotherhood executes a weapon skill. Now that second part, cool, great. We can use chakras more. They also have a trait that when they land a critical hit, they have a chance of opening a chakra as well. But physical damage, that meant that if you had a composition with more magic damage than another composition, you were just worse. And it made it so that Monk was seen not as much as they would have liked. Now, another important note, Brotherhood only granted you those chakra stacks when someone was executing a weapon skill. This means that a spellcaster was not helping you open chakras at all. So the performance of the job drastically changed depending on the composition, and thus both of these skills saw a lot of fire. Even if now, well, Riddle of Fire, even if nowadays they're considered staple skills, they feel good, they pump your damage, back then, they, they kept trying to give them drawbacks and negatives because they wanted to like enforce like, oh, you want to bring a monk if you want to play with a lot of physical jobs. But everyone just wanted to play with whatever job they could play with, not try to build compositions around monk, which was just, just wasn't interesting to them. So those saw a lot of, a lot, a lot of, uh, N not good times. And then the removed skills, Featherfoot, Second Wind, Haymaker, and Touch of Death. Second Wind, kind of cheating to say it's removed, because as you can see in the roll actions, it was just made a roll action with 500 potency. We also see arm's length. You know, Haymaker, like I said, eventually would become arm's length. You can see from the actual, uh, from the little icon here. 
and that's, you know, as we know it today. Leg Sweep is a stun with no damage tied to it, Diversion for Enmity Reduction, Invigorate, Bloodbath, even Goad. You could take Goad and give other people TP. And then you had Crutch. I forgot about Crutch. Removes Bind and Heavy from a target party member. Nobody hears that. Faint, Loring, Strength, and Dexterity. And of course, True North to nullify those directional requirements. Two and a half minutes. I feel, I feel like I had this reaction already, but I'm mad seeing it again. That's just embarrassing. Looking at traits, um, the strength traits are just, you know, whatever. They change the level they're at. Deep meditation, 50% chance that a chakra will open upon dealing critical damage. So now your chakras could be open more than like once, maybe twice a fight, which is why Forbidden Chakra was brought down to 250 potency and the ever so exciting Tackle Mastery. Oh boy. Now, what's funny is this Tackle Mastery trait would actually be the key in patch, I believe, 4.4 to what is still to this day considered the best iteration of Monk, the mid-Stormblood Monk iteration. Now, a lot of stuff here is somewhat the same. You can see Boot Shine, True Strike. Yeah, there's changes here that you can see. They're highlighted because there's changes from the previous patch, but we're looking at basically the end of Stormblood's version of it. And while all of these skills are largely the same, there's probably some small difference here. For example, you can see 10% damage increase on Grease Lightning, still a 16 second duration, uh, all this other stuff. So the same Twin Snakes looks like just potency changes, you know, going to the 130. Arm of the Destroyer is still 50. This is now 50 at base, and then the dot is 70, so this saw like a 20 potency increase, and the damage over time is, is uh, well, this is if you like miss the rear, I think, is what some of the... Oh, that's what some of these changes are. They're probably increases to missed positional uh, potencies. Demolish here, too. And we go down to Fist of Fire. <laughs> I forgot they did this. They made it 6% instead of 5%. <laughs> I remember, you know what? I do remember that getting memed on pretty hard. But hey, I mean, it wasn't going to turn down 1% more damage. You know, who the heck would do that? But then we come to the big, big changes and the big one is in that of riddle of wind so they made the second stack of riddle of wind or of the wind tackle which would become riddle of wind grant greased lightning so what was born from that were the variants of monk rotations. You had the traditional fire only rotation, something I definitely leaned towards. I was going through a really hard time in my life when I was playing monk throughout all of Stormblood. And quite frankly, I just didn't want to commit the mental capacity to change or improve in any way, but it was absolutely worth improving. Don't let my nonchalance fool you. If you could master Riddle of Wind, use it completely properly, right opener, right reopeners, the single or double tornado kick openers and reopeners made it so that tornado kick wasn't just a meme anymore. We, we've just, we already stopped talking about it up to this point, but now you could just get these super interactive, high potency, literally hundreds of DPS better than what you were doing before rotations. And it was super technical and super involved and as many would probably assume, super difficult compared to what a lot of other jobs had to do. Monk was a lot more niche of a job at this point and this kind of solidified that, but the high skilled monks that got into this, that made the adjustment and didn't just stick to the fire rotation like I did, they were pumping like you wouldn't believe and you know what even if you weren't super adept at it if you just threw out the occasional one like if you were just like oh this is a good time for that i remember doing it at the start of the ultima weapon phase for example but not much in the phases prior between the uptime and downtime mechanics i just didn't want a chance losing the ideal opportunity for it but if you could find opportunities where you can make it comfortable to do and just incorporate it occasionally even that that little tiny bit was just well worth going through the extra effort. And it was a lot of fun. We also still had Riddle of Fire increasing the weapon skill recast time, which I think we actually used to our benefit to fit both uh, Wind Tackle and Riddle of Wind in one OGCD. I think that actually became beneficial to this rotation at this point. 
And then Brotherhood, um, they also made this other change to Brotherhood, Brotherhood and Meditative Brotherhood. This was in case you had two monks in the same party, because what was happening is if you had two monks in the same party, you'd both Brotherhood, and the one of you that Brotherhood had second would be the only one that would count. So the first monk would just lose the entire effect and not generate any chakras. This separated the buffs so that way both the monks could actually generate chakras even if the brotherhood effect itself wasn't actually being shared properly across everyone but it was still only physical damage so it was still memed on uh true north had its cooldown reduced to 90 seconds by the end of the expansion and everything else remained pretty much the same so as much as very little change, that one change to Riddle of Wind, the biggest change they made, made for one of the most fun versions of Monk. And while I wasn't hyper proficient at it, because I wasn't really trying to be, I acknowledged that it was one of the pinnacles of the job, which made Shadowbringers all the more disappointing. Now, as we go into Shadowbringers, as you can see, we're looking at July 30th, 2019. So what is that, like four weeks, three? It's like, it's like 25 something days after the release of, of the expansion, maybe like four weeks. Um, yeah, they uh, pretty much undid all that cool stuff I mentioned at the end of Sword <laughs> So they did make some other changes that have still remained important to this day. The big thing being uh, they added Leaden Fist as an effect to Dragon Kick. So the Blunt Resistance was gone, but they still needed a reason to make you Dragon Kick. So Boot Shine now had that bonus potency if you had the Leaden Fist effect, which is why you would go between Dragon Kick and Boot Shine repeatedly, uh, no matter what now. Um, and then we saw other changes, you know, again, they were kind of trying to tone back positional related stuff. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the potencies are way closer now. They're higher, but they're also only 20 apart. So this is where they just, it still mattered. You didn't want to not do positionals, but the difference between being someone who didn't did it was getting to be a lot smaller. Other than that, these are still all functionally the same. They got rid of the silence from Arm of the Destroyer and actually gave it a decent potency. And one thing Shadowbringers really did for Monk was give it a very satisfying AoE rotation. Playing it in dungeons felt awesome. Not to mention with TP being gone now in Shadowbringers, they had all the freedom in the world to just do all of their rotations. They even gave them an AoE for their uh, Coral Stance. They haven't had one this entire time, and they finally would have one with this. Uh, Demolish, you know, again, they just did some potency-related adjustments, nothing too fancy here. Rockbreaker is still a cone at this point, and, uh, but otherwise, yeah, just potency, potency, potency. Fist of Wind, oh, the Elemental Fists were entirely gone at this point, but in exchange, Shoulder Tackle now had the two charges all the time with the 30-second cooldown, so at the very least, their mobility went up, they had this off-global, there was no stun tied to it anymore, which was something they did you know, ad nauseum at this point. They got rid of all of those damage and stun tie together. Some of them they got rid of before. Now they just had gotten rid of pretty much all of them. So that extra mobility was really nice. Or you would save the stacks for burst damage during your, you know, during your one and two minute rotations. Fist of Fire, 10% damage dealt now. Mantra, 20% for you and everyone around you. Four Point Fury, this is their just their AoE for Coral Stance, and it would also extend the duration of Twin Snakes. Um, you know, I wonder if that was always there or if they added that. I mean, what's being implied here, I, I'm pretty sure these revisions are from the end of Stormblood and not revisions that they made post-launch. But I know some jobs really struggled with that where they gave them like a new AoE, but it didn't extend their buff. Dragoon, of course, being the one that comes to mind the most. But I think they actually did this correct from the get-go. Perfect balance. Uh, pretty much the same. Now it's two minutes though. You know, we were starting to get closer and closer to that two minute buff window that we know so well nowadays. And now it was a much more used skill. You didn't really sit idly with this. And to be fair, with the double tornado kick rotation, perfect balance was insanely important. You had to use it to get back to that triple grease lightning stack as quickly as possible. But if I recall correctly, there is one thing that is pretty important. Yeah, okay, I see it. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that eventually. I just wanted to make sure that was Shadowbringers because I thought I was remembering correctly. So yeah, we have uh, Dragon Kick again. This is still pretty much the same, except now it grants the Leaden Fist effect. Form Shift. It did this? Oh yeah. So now if you used Form Shift during Coral Form, you would extend Grease Lightning. So it was basically treating itself like a Snap Punch, a Demolish, or a Rock Breaker. So you could use it to extend Grease Lightning during downtime. Awesome, great change. Meditation uh, opens all five chakras when used outside of combat. I actually forgot to check. Did they make that change 
in Stormblood, or did that actually take till Shadowbringers? It took till Shadowbringers. Got it. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Forbidden Chakra had its potency bumped up again. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, but that's because they bumped all the potencies. All the potency numbers are way higher, so that's not much of a surprise. Except for Elixir Field, which lost 20 potency for whatever reason, but only a 30 second cooldown, so pretty good. You'll also notice that some of their other off globals are gone now, any that weren't gone before, but you can see internal release gone, steel be gone, one ohm punch gone, howling fist gone, purification, earth tackle, wind tackle, fire tackle, and riddle of wind all gone. So a lot of skills pruned and made them a little less busy, but the idea was that if you got chakra stacks, you weren't busy with much else. Oh, would you look at tornado kick? Still tornado kick. Oh, it only has a 10 second cooldown now. Great, but we lost riddle of wind. So why would I tornado kick? Yep, went right back to being useless again, and that made a lot of people upset. Riddle of Earth is here again, but now it doesn't require uh, Fist of Earth or anything. And, uh, you know, Riddle of Earth, it's undergone a lot of changes. I'd say the most recent change it got was probably the least popular one. But either way, it's still always been a good skill since it was introduced. You know, you use it, it extends Grease Lightning to the maximum again, reduces damage taken again. But more importantly, it also nullifies all action direction requirements. So if you knew you weren't going to be able to hit positionals and there was a room-wide AoE, you could use it as like a two-fold bonus for the job to get a lot of DPS. It became a very important damaging tool on top of using True North. And it just made it so that the job was just that much stronger because it nullified the positional requirements for 30 seconds. It was like, why even have positionals at that point? Uh-oh, I think they were listening to us when we said that. We'll talk about that in a bit. Riddle of Fire, now just increased damage dealt, no slowing effect. And Brotherhood, still physical damage only. <laughs> I thought it was changed by now, but it wasn't. They also got an AoE Chakra Spender and that of Enlightenment. They got a Notman. So I hate to, to bring this up. A Notman I meme on nowadays for being absolutely useless. But it wasn't absolutely useless in Shadowbringers when it first came out. What people would do is they would time a Notman's in order to get extra stacks of Greased Lightning at very specific points in their rotation. And oh boy, was that weird. Most people didn't do it, but the few people who did, did see somewhat of an increase in damage. And it was really annoying. And then they fixed that and made it not possible, and then it's been useless ever since. So, whoop de do. And then, oh boy, level 80, our new skill, six-sided star, 400 potency, extends Grease Lightning's duration to the maximum, but has doubled the GCD of all your other skills, doesn't have a stance, doesn't move your stance, doesn't do anything. It's another downtime tool. That was just Monk. Monk just kept getting downtime tool after downtime tool after downtime tool. Ways of managing Grease Lightning. Everything was tied back to Grease Lightning. It just, it, it had to be factored in because it was the single most important aspect that either needed to make it easier to maintain or not prevent you from maintaining it or benefit from it or expend it. It's just everything was based around it at that point and would become the reason why later in Shadowbringers and eventually Endwalker, they would make the sweeping changes that they did. Other than that, most of the changes here are, are level-based for the cross-class action, some of them cooldown-based, some of them just overall effect-based, like this now working on the tank roll and range physical roll on top of the melee roll. Uh, True North having charges and being 45 seconds, uh, having the enhanced tackle effect, you know, the Fist of Fire buff, Deep Meditation 2, so they had even more chances of opening a chakra, but the most important thing, the fourth Greased Lightning stack. So this was kind of a weird time for Monk because at three stacks of Grease Lightning and Fist of Fire, you had, what, 40% increased damage on, without factoring in Twin Snakes. With Riddle of Wind, you, with the fourth stack, had four, uh, had four 40% damage increase, but you also had an extra 5% haste. So the idea with Monk now was to stay in Fist of Fire until you were about to hit the fourth stack, and right before you get the fourth stack of Grease Lightning, you switch to Wind, and then you stay in Wind as long as you can maintain it. I don't remember if there was a Tornado Kick rotation involved. I think people probably tried to make it work, but then it didn't. And it was just kind of weird, because they gave you this, at level 72, they increased Fist of Fire damage for like your I'm not doing as much damage phase, but then gave you Riddle of Wind four levels later. It was just... It was strange. And again, it all tied into Greased Lightning just being the main mechanic. They just kept having to do things that involved Greased Lightning because it was just that important to the job. Now, by the end of Shadowbringers, 
we knew that Monk was getting a full rework. And in fact, they light reworked it in patch 5.4 to remove some of that reliance on Grease Lightning. Now I say remove some of it. They pretty much removed all of it because no longer was Grease Lightning something you had to maintain. And now we are looking at the end of Shadowbringers, mind you. It was just something you got as you leveled up. So the job just naturally became faster and faster and faster. And to adjust for that, you can see again, some potency increases. They have way more potency now with the Grease Lightning changes they would get. And uh, yeah, I, I think because because Grease Lightning only increased speed as a passive. Yeah, it didn't increase damage anymore. So they took all of the damage that it would have given and just fed it into the base potencies for all the skills. And other than that, these skills didn't change all too much. Most of them didn't. Ha excuse me. However, the ones that did change, changed pretty significantly. So we're going mantras 10%, you know, four point fury, perfect balance. So now perfect balance granted. Did it grant six stacks before? Actually, let me, let me go back and check. Cause I, I kind of just went through it. Yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> so now perfect balance was six stacks that lasted 15 seconds. And that's how long you had to do it. And uh, yeah, it's because you were just fast enough. It was as if you were in Riddle of Wind pretty much the entire time. So they need to give you those extra stacks to emulate what was possible during Riddle of Wind when you had four stacks before. Now, on top of that, that meant Form Shift no longer had that one aspect tied to it. Um, everything else was largely the same. And then they made a change. Okay, well, before we go to the Riddle of Earth change, probably the most important change, Tornado Kick was now simply an off-global GCD. That's it. You just used it every 45 seconds. And that was the end of it. Some people were disappointed after looking at Stormblood Tornado Kick and how interactive it was. We knew there was a way for them to do that, but they went the easy route and made it an off-global. They ended up going a different route with it in Endwalker, but at the end of the day, the whole it expends your major resource was gone. They just left that to being the meditation and the chakra stacks and eventually what would become beast chakra. Now, Riddle of Earth also got a change. Um, instead of it being the one stack for 30 seconds when you triggered Earth's reply, you now got Riddle of Earth. Each stack reduced the damage taken by 10% and nullified all direction requirements for 10 seconds and you got three charges of it. So instead of just having it for 30 seconds straight, you could use it when you needed it. And again, it just felt like Monk barely even needed to do its positionals at all because you had this and True North with its two charges. Again, that'll matter soon. Oh, and would you look at that? When we go to Brotherhood here, what does it say? It says physical damage. And by the end of Shadowbringers, what did it say? All damage. It was also only 20% and it finally worked on spells. Did they make it work on spells before? Nope, it didn't work on spells. I think it started working on spells before 5.4, but either way, they had finally caught up with it and Monk was usable in all job comps again. Other than that, Enlightenment, Anotment, uh, Anotment. <laughs> I can't even say it. I don't even want to say it. It was useless at this point. It triggers the cooldowns of your weapon skill so you couldn't do the weird off-global cheese that people were doing with it before by timing it specifically. And because Grease Lightning was gone, now all it could do is extend Twin Snakes. It still does that. It's so useless. I don't know why they leave it as is. Six-Sided Star also got increased movement speed added to it and its potency got bumped up because of Grease Lightning being removed. But other than that, I actually played a lot of 5.4 Monk and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm glad that I got to play it. And I also played it going into uh, 6.0 a little bit. I, I dabbled with 6.0 Monk because I wasn't playing it for raid. So I played it kind of just in my spare time. And then while it was simpler and it wasn't as fast or furious maybe as the tornado kick rotation was, which was really chaotic, it was also comfy. So I was okay playing it. I especially played it a lot in Bozja when I would juice through those like 12 minute Bozja runs. Oh, I miss the days. Take me back. Take me back to 1.6 GCD Monk in Bozja going through Delubrum. Just, oh, I got to throw a clip of that on the screen somewhere because those were good times. There was an 80% chance of opening a chakra with a crit, which would eventually be increased to the 100% chance. Anytime you crit, you open a chakra. Made boot shine way more valuable. And of course, the crit stat, as if it wasn't important already, was also more you know beneficial to them because of that. And then also Riddle of Wind gone, because what was the point? You know, they we had Grease Lightning just built into everything at that point. That's it for Shadowbringers Monk. Now, they said they were making Shadowbringers Monk kind of simpler so they could build on it with Endwalker. And I love what they did with Monk and Endwalker. Maybe I'm not, maybe not everyone does, but I know I do. So let's cover that real quick.
So here we're looking at the start to Endwalker Monk, and most of it is not too different, or at least not on the surface, but you'll notice right away something that's different with Bootshine. It no longer requires a rear. You'll also notice True Strike doesn't require it. They got rid of positionals in Endwalker for their Opo Opo and Raptor Stance skills. Also, I said Coral Stance by accident like way earlier when I was referring to uh, Four Point Fury, meant to say Raptor. My apologies. Either way, only two positionals, snap punch and demolish. You know what? I understand why they did it. And once I got better at current monk, it made more sense. But I still try to do these positionals to this day. I can't stop myself. It's just, it's just a habit. I have to try. And you know how many times I've just like thought, oh no, I need to get to the rear. And I don't. I just don't. And then I, I look dumb because I'm doing it. And I know, I know a lot of career monks that still do that. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not alone. Snap Punch still kept its stuff. One of my favorite changes. And Walker, I love that you did this. They made Monk a fully functional job super early on. Meditations level 15. Steel Peak became the early level version of Forbidden Chakra. They also did the same thing with Howling Fist became the early level version of Enlightenment. I love that they did this with these skills. It brought back skills that had been removed in the prior expansion that people really enjoyed. And at the very least gave the job some consistency. You could learn how this job mechanic worked early on. It would get better as you leveled up and the skills would get better and more impressive as well. Something they really need to do with more jobs without making it so that the job doesn't get any better at the later levels, which is a balance I think they nailed with Monk when you get to 50, 60, 70, 80, and eventually 90. Arm of the Destroyer, Demolish, Rock, and none of this stuff. Okay, here's here's another big change. Uh, shoulder Tackle removed an Endwalker. They replaced it with Thunderclap, where you could rush to an enemy or party member's location. This is my Thunderclap. You know what? I thought I'd miss Shoulder Tackle and the damage aspect of it, but Thunderclap is just amazing. It looks cool. It's responsive, and you can use it to hop to allies as well. You can save so many runs, just hyper mobility on Monk, and three stacks, 30-second recast, Oh my God, it's such a good skill. And then you have Mantra, still good, 10%. I, I don't remember if it gets a trade or something later on. Uh, four Point Fury, Dragon Kick, the Perfect Balance. Perfect Balance, one of the other big changes. So they added a new job gauge in Endwalker, as you're likely aware now, where when you execute your basic weapon skills under Perfect Balance, you get Beast Chakras, Opa Opa Chakra, Coral Chakra, or Raptor Chakra. And combining these chakras allows you to access a finishing move called a Blitz. And then you use the Blitzes to build up Nadis, and then you unleash the Nadis to unleash your ultimate skill. And it, in my opinion, it makes the job very fun, very involved, and it's also strangely flexible. Because of the job's rotation, the whole idea of going between the stances is still so prominent, and this allows you to ignore the stances. You, As long as you understand how to get to your biggest hitting skills, you can have incredibly flexible one and two minute burst windows that make it so you don't feel so bogged down by this whole two minute meta change. Yes, you still want to be playing into those, but you have so many more options for how to utilize that time as long as you meet certain minimums within that time frame. Form shift still here, you know, they just made it longer, I believe. It's got the 30 second timer now instead of whatever it had before. Uh, Forbidden Chakra, just more potency or just potency changing, I believe. Here's Masterful Blitz. You could see Elixir Field, Celestial Revolution. You never want a Celestial Revolution. Rising Phoenix and Phantom Rush. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, it's actually slightly different at the low levels. This is showing you what the max level skills are, but uh, Elixir Field, you know, still here. That's that's here at level 60, but you actually have Flint Strike, which is the early level version of uh, Rising Phoenix and actually a really cool animation. I wish they had used it for something that I would see more because I actually really like the Flint Strike animation, surprisingly. And also Phantom Rush at the earlier levels at 60 is Tornado Kick. <laughs> <laughs> so Tornado Kick back in the rotation. It would get replaced eventually once you hit level 90 and it becomes Phantom Rush. But hey, at least it's not useless anymore, right? Riddle of Earth has you know, three stacks, each stack reducing damage taken by 20% and then maximum of three charges. So now it was just this insanely OP damage mitigation, which unfortunately changed in patch 6.3, but we'll remember you as you were Riddle of Earth. You were so good for so long and now you're just okay. You're not bad now but you're just okay. Riddle of Fire, only 15% damage increase. Brotherhood, uh, 
I don't even know what's really different about this. I think it's just, oh, 100% chance when uh, somebody executes a weapon skull or casts a spell. Oh, man, so good. Riddle of Wind, probably the weirdest. Why do they insist on keeping Riddle of Wind? They keep trying to find a way to keep Riddle of Wind. It reduces auto attack delay. But, like, this is good damage-wise, but, like, it's so uninteresting and uninteractive. You just use it every 90 seconds. It's just like, yeah, you can optimize it slightly to, depending on the fight and how it's made, but, ugh. It's just so weird. Enlightenment here, Anotman's still useless. Six-Sided Star, still a downtime tool uh, or a finishing move tool. Shadow of the Destroyer, an update to um, Arm of the Destroyer. Rising Phoenix, the upgrade to Flint Strike, and Phantom Rush, the upgrade to Tornado Kick. So they make sure the job is mostly functional at level 60. You get personal and raid buffs later on. Your skills evolve, and you get a few more downtime tools to round out the kit. And in my opinion, it just works so, so well. Cross class skills, you don't need to really look at too much. Faint, you know, just lowers targets, physical and magic damage. Still physical more, magic a little bit less. And then deep meditation just changes. You know, you get the deep meditation way earlier because, you know, you have meditation stacks way earlier. Still not until 38, but all the same. And then the guaranteed chakra opening, grease lightning, uh, improves discipline fist damage buff. So that's twin snakes. They changed the name of the buff to discipline fist. And honestly, that confused me for a very long time. The rest of these are upgrades and, and basically just affect the skills the way you already saw. Third charge of thunderclap, upgrading to shadow of the destroyer, etc., etc. They have made some changes. Oh my goodness. Why is this so zoomed in now? <laughs> Let me uh, let me zoom that out a little bit. I, I think I know why, but all the same. Yeah, I mean, they've still made changes to it since then. I think the only major change they've made since 6.0, though, is to uh, Riddle of Earth. And it's now just reduces damage taken by 20%. If you take damage during the 10 seconds you have that, you'll restore 500 potency of HP over the next 15 seconds with a two-minute cooldown. How did you go from what it was before to this? Like, it's not bad, but it's not like it was before. I want the whole one back. Either way, while Monk has definitely had its ups and downs, and it's it's just it's managed to keep a largely recognizable uh, just trend yeah it doesn't have positionals or grease lightning anymore but it still doesn't really not feel like monk if that makes sense especially because habit ends up taking over and you still try to do some of those things anyway the blitzes are super fun it's super interactive still and it's one of the the least frustrating jobs to play in the two minute meta in my opinion so i feel like it's transitioned into the current day quite well without losing most of its flavor but let me know what you think in the comment section of the video below. If you made it this far, definitely like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Make sure this thing hits the algorithm or whatever, because you made it this far. You kind of owe it to yourself to maybe do that. Uh, and be sure to catch the next retrospective video. We're going to be doing tons of videos looking at the old stuff from Final Fantasy XIV to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of A Realm Reborn. So be ready for all the nostalgia baiting that you could possibly enjoy or the lessons learned if you weren't around in the good old days. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care.